All right, so here's Jeter for the podcast. Um, this was a home run to right center field. This is the same swing, even though we're looking at um, a front view on the left and then the side view of the same swing on the right. It was a home run to right center field. And I want to talk a little bit about, number one, his footwork. This is a big dive. So we're looking at the front view right now. Look at the catcher start with his glove up and then go down. How different is that than today where they start with it on? On the ground. Okay, I digress. Um, but as Jeter comes down out of his stride, look how quiet the number two is on his back. Okay, as he's planting his foot, I would say 90% of amateur players that I see and work with do not keep their shoulders quiet like this as they're swinging. Okay, they're, that, those shoulders are starting to turn usually as the foot's coming down. And that creates a lot of problem for adjustability and for creating separation. So there's Jeter at toe touch. You can see his his heel line is almost facing right the second baseman, maybe the the three four hole, something like that. That's where his body's facing. That's where his his foot line is facing. He gets to heel plant, and you can see him sink into his front hip. Okay, so that's why it works. I'm gonna highlight his left hip here from toe touch. To heel plant, look how much his hip starts to rotate back. Okay, at the same time, look how we could still see the number two. It hasn't really changed much, has it? Okay, that's where your initial power source comes from. And again, he was built for that. I remember Ted Williams saying, uh, telling my dad that you know guys that are tall and lanky, they're going to get more torque. They're going to have a bigger torque angle. Guys that are stockier. They're not going to have as much, but those muscles are tighter and they're going to explode more. Okay, so somebody like Jeter versus, um, I'll use, geez, I don't know, like uh, Schwarber, for oh. instance, right? Okay. Yeah, we can use Schwarber, who's, who's thick and, you know, he's not going to get this kind of separation and, and flexibility out of his body. But what he doesn't need, he, he has so much strength, Schwarber, it doesn't matter. All right, so there's his launch position. Excellent. You can see his hands kind of up by his ear, which we see on the right. I'm going to try to take that swing on the right, the side view. That's probably the same position right there at heel plant. Okay, one thing you notice is his, his angle between, and this is not something that I would teach, okay, the angle between his uh, bat, trying to draw it in here, okay, I'm going to try to do a better job. Okay, his bat and his forearm is a pretty big angle. Okay, it's 128 degrees. Most major league players are 90 or less in this position. Okay, that bat is almost wrapped around their head. So why is this good or why is it bad? Well, if it moved back from here, if it started at 90 degrees and then it went to 128, that would be really bad. But he's going to go from 128. Now watch him. We're looking at the side view now. Watch him pull that knob forward. And watch his elbow get in front of his Yankee emblem on the front of his shirt. So then as he pulls his hands forward, if we draw a line through his forearm and the bat, I mean, it's a different view, but you can see how much tighter that angle is. So that's like a golfer. That's what a golfer does where they hinge their wrists kind of on the downswing and they create tension. So notice how far out in front the knob is of his body in this position. This is amazing. Look how short the barrel is. I mean, the barrel is only like 10 inches behind his back. Okay. This is a very short approach to the ball. So I'm going to bring that back again. And as he rotates, again, he's pulling the knob forward. Think about, you know, if you're you're lifting weights and you have the, the stack weights set up and you use the rope right we all know the rope for your triceps and you put it there and essentially what he's doing is he's pulling those stack weights kind of down and forward with the knob okay he's pulling and it's creating tension in his hands and then he gets that knob out in front so in this position so jim i brought it to a position where the barrel is now released away from his shoulder okay but his front arm is like almost straight his right elbow is nowhere near his rib cage, right? Everybody talks about it. you got to keep that elbow next to your ribs. It's got to be dug into the ribs. No, it doesn't. If you do that, you're going to spin off usually, okay? You're going to run out of bat. You're going to hit balls off the end of the bat. He gets that elbow out in front, and then by the time he releases the barrel, okay, I have, he's hitting it so far out in front, i got to move the video over. There he hits it. 
I mean, that does not look like a home run to right center field. Okay. But how was he able to hit a ball? See the space between his hands and his body. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. I look for that with all my players. This this nice kind of hole right in here between the arms. Again, this is a contact. This isn't post-contact. There's the ball on the barrel. I would consider that barrel. That's about as good as it gets. Okay. So now, why was he able to hit this pitch that far out in front? Now, it looks more out in front here because of the view of the camera, but it's definitely at his front toes. Okay. It's his at his front foot. The reason is, is because he closed his stance down. So when you close your stance down and everything faces right field, it allows you to hit the ball out in front more to right field. Okay. Um, and this pitch was what? It was like ball, I'm trying to see where he hit it. I would say this is like ball five. I mean, this is a good pitch to hit, right? So here's ball one there, two, three. It's about belt high. Yeah. It's probably ball five. Like it's a good pitch to hit and he didn't miss it. But if he didn't dive as much, if he didn't extend through the ball as much, so I'm going to go a little bit further, look at his right arm extend through all the way. So not only does his right arm get straight, look at how his right palm is still up, okay? That's how you don't roll over balls, okay? And then if we look, I'm just going to put a little vertical bat angle line here from the front. I have him right after contact. His bat vertical angle is, mm, I don't think I drew that quite right. Okay, again, it's, well, maybe I did, 24 degrees, okay? What do most people want? They want 30s, not Jake. Just look at my blast video in your library, <laughs> online academy people. There it is again, Jim. But look at his barrel after contact. It's still 24 degrees or right around 24 degrees. That's how you extend through without manipulating the barrel to either hit under the ball more or over the ball more. Okay, so it's just a solid swing. The guy was mechanically compact. He had that, the 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 one outlier move I would say that he had was, was that when he launches his swing, his knob isn't at the catcher. Okay, that's kind of, you know, everybody talks about, you gotta have the knob at the catcher, knob at the catcher. His knob is almost facing right behind the, you know, his uh, right behind home plate, where most people, I'm going to draw a line in there, their knob and their bat is kind of facing there. It's it's next to their helmet more, which is what I teach. Okay, I, if somebody did this, what Jeter's doing, and then, but by the time they pulled it back, so now I'm looking at the side view, see how that bat comes right down next to the trap muscle there? So that's a that's a hand pull. I don't care what you call it. Some people call it pushing the hand. Some people call it pulling the knob. Um, I don't care what it is. It's a great move that everybody does. And notice how that bat maybe starts open and cast it, but then he slices right down over the top of his shoulder, his trap muscle. That's a great move. So if I had somebody that did that, I'd be fine with it. Now, if a player started, again, we're looking at this video on the, on the right from the side. If the player started with a bat where the knob was facing the catcher and then their first move was to throw the bat back away from the head, that would be bad. That we would have to change. But if it just starts here, think Ronald Acuna kind of does the same similar move. If it starts there and then it actually pulls closer to the ear, which is what you're seeing here, then you're totally fine. So this is a cool view of, hey, you know, Mr. Clutch, Mr. Hall of Famer, why was he able to be clutch? Well, he was able to be clutch because he had a good timing window. He was on plane for a long time. He didn't necessarily set any records with exit velos, but he set records with how many rings he had. And to me, that's a pretty impressive feat. So I'm a huge Jeter fan because of that. He was a winner. He commanded respect from his teammates. And he played hard pretty much every inning of every game he was out there. And, by the way, his swing mechanics were pretty good. They were.